Ramsey TV. If God has chosen you before the disruption of the world to be holy and flawless in His sight, you will hear the call and you'll get it. You'll understand it. Ah, this is so relieving to know that God does not make mistakes and that which He begins, He will finish. And He began a work in you before the disruption of the world of Genesis 1-2. We're going way back in history now. Now, I'm not saying you existed. I'm not saying we were alive. But in the mind of God, He already knew which human beings on the earth He would pick for this select company. Well, Martin, you're acting like this is a really exclusive club. It is. Well, Martin, you're acting like you're really important. I am. And so are you, if you're in the body of Christ. But remember what I told you yesterday, this happens in spite of our acts. It's nothing to do with it. Well, you're not worthy of this call, Martin. Yeah, tell me something I don't know. Worthiness has nothing to do with it. With Israel, yes, they had to be worthy because they're struggling sin with sin constantly, constantly. That's their thing. There's some perverted part of the religious person that likes it, that likes to struggle against sin. It's pride, thinking that this time I'm going to overcome it. This time, you know, this time, this is, I'm finally in a good mood. They finally played the right music. I finally say the right prayers. I've finally uh, done enough Bible reading. I finally stopped all my bad habits. And now I've attained to a place where I can now, I think, live a what? A perfect life? A sinless life? What kind of, what, what, what? What are you going to live now? We're freed from all that. And we are, we're chosen before the disruption of the world and those who are chosen will be called. Difference number eight out of 31 differences between the gospel of the circumcision and the gospel of the uncircumcision. I'm not making up those terms, by the way. Go to Galatians 2 verse 7. Very plain, very, very plain there. You can't miss it. Peter was the caretaker of the gospel of the circumcision. That is the gospel of Israel. Circumcision was a right given to Israel to try to remind them, ouch, that they are weak in the flesh. And Paul's gospel is called the gospel of the uncircumcision just to differentiate it from the circumcision. Paul wouldn't have mentioned circumcision at all because who cares about cutting off a piece of the male reproductive member? Who cares? But in order to contrast it with that, we have to call it uncircumcision. We could call it, and it is called the gospel of the grace of God. It's called the, Paul calls it my gospel. How about that? Paul says this is my gospel. Either this is the most arrogant guy that ever walked the earth, or he was given a distinct message. Distinct. Yes, Paul is revealing secrets. Difference number eight from the first idiot in heaven. You can order this book now at martinzender.com. It's all written down here in beautiful detail. Somebody once said to me, this, these are not my words. Somebody said to another person, if you only have one, besides the scriptures, if you only have one book that you can read that will give you the whole plan of God and give it to you straight and give it to you without any mumbo jumbo, it's the first idiot in heaven. That was the greatest compliment I could get as an, as an author. Now, the gospel of circumcision, Peter's gospel, believers are called first, then chosen. They're called first, then chosen. In Paul's gospel, they're chosen first, then called. This is fantastic. And again, you can't make this up. Here it is. Matthew 22, 14. Jesus says, for many are called, yet few are chosen. Many are called. So Jesus is going out calling people, but few are chosen, few respond. Okay, this is the Israelite gospel. It's an if-then proposition. It's presented as an if-then proposition. This is like, if you answer my call, then I will choose you. If you answer my call, I'll choose you. Jesus, well, this is where this comes from, Revelation 3.20 but again, keep in mind, this is strictly an Israelite message. It belongs to a different gospel, not ours. 
Jesus said, Revelation 3.20, Lo, I stand at the door and am knocking. If ever anyone should be hearing my voice and opening the door, I will also be coming into him and dining with him and he with me. So this whole thing of the invitation, I was like, can I come in? Who is it? It's Jesus. Jesus? Yeah. Jesus isn't here. Sorry, that was an old Cheech and Chong routine. But it's the old invitation thing. Now, keep in mind that this is the relative perspective. We're seeing things, we're seeing action on a stage. We're not looking in the, these passages, of, we're not looking at the cause of things, like why some people are responding and why some people aren't. Because, in, in fact, absolutely no one can respond to Jesus Christ unless God first gives him or her an ability to do so. For Jesus, uh, Jesus himself admitted this. He said, no one can come to me if ever the Father who sends me should not be drawing him. John 6, 44. So nobody can come, you see, unless God draws them. But on this stage, forget the absolute viewpoint for now. Forget why some people are answering the call, why others aren't. On the stage, this gospel of the circumcision is presented as a challenge, as an imitation, as an if-then proposition. Presented it that way because it's a mixture of law and grace. So, relatively speaking, in the Israelite gospel, it requires human cooperation. God wanted it presented that way. And again, the initial purpose was to demonstrate human failure. God needed a people who were convinced that they could justify themselves by works of law. They, have to, they had to be convinced that they could do it. And God accommodated them. He put out the law as though, you know, why can't you do this? Come on, I gave you a law. All you have to do is follow it. Get busy. In the meantime, it's wink, wink. God's like, hmm, well, he knows how that story's going to end, but it, 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 he has to do it this way. He's not playing games. This is the wisdom of God to make a demonstration. So that he could later point to these people, utter failures, by the way, and say, see, by works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified. I mentioned that verse several times. It's Romans 3.20. And I'll rem I remind you again, Israel was a gigantic demonstration of the failure of flesh. And again, Christianity hasn't gotten that memo and they ignorantly as well as anachronistically they still attempt to follow law so the question arises now does god cast israel away now that she has fulfilled her mission as a bad example how would you like to be that to be your mission what's your mission in life i'm a bad example okay like what do you mean i'm an example of the inability of flesh to do the precepts of God. Uh, is your life miserable? Yeah, pretty much. Why do you persist? Because I'm an Israelite. <laughs> because I'm an Israelite, and this is what I do. I persist in my ignorance. All right. God does not cast away Israel. He is merciful, true to himself, true to his promises. He will fulfill the promises he made to Israel. He will give her a new heart. In the meantime, in the meantime, in the gospel of the uncircumcision, gospel given to Paul, believers are chosen first, then called. I'm not making that up. Sounds like I am. I don't make things up. That's Romans 8.30. Here's the verse. Now whom he designates beforehand, and we know when that happens, right? Before the disruption of the world. Whom he designates beforehand, these he calls also. And whom he calls... These he justifies. Whom he justifies, these he glorifies also. So, having temporarily set Israel aside, if you want to know the details of that, read Romans chapter 11. It's all there in juicy detail. God was now ready to launch an evangel that was presented from the start as a message of, of total grace and how much more grace can you get where you're designated beforehand it's already done and only the details remain nothing left but details after that once God has chosen you designated you beforehand from before the disruption of the world it's only the details now and 
sometime in your life you will be called. Paul's radical language here, yeah, whom he designates beforehand, these he calls also. This is not an if-then proposition. It's not something you accept in order for it to be true. This is something true that you accept. Well, I think I uttered a profundity there. I think it deserves repetition. Paul's Gospel, it's not something that you accept for it to be true. It's something true, already true, that you accept. I'd like to top myself on this show, but I don't think I'm going to risk it because, because that was pretty good.